Hey everyone, this is your host Brian, and welcome to episode 35. Today's topic, just just vote. I have I don't have any jokes, just please vote. Find out about all that and more on this week's episode of the Pause Button Podcast. Just voting, eh? Okay. <laughs> That's, that's what we're gonna leave it at. You know, I I feel like uh, I feel like that's it's important. It's important. <laughs> I, I don't know that it's gonna save the world right now. This <laughs> flaming hellscape that we find you ourselves gotta try. in. Hey, hey, let me let me just we we're gonna have like one listener in like all the swing states. I'm not saying that like everything's gonna be okay because of us, but it could be. <laughs> we yeah. can change the world yeah, with with all We've of our listeners. Leave. We we will be. Uh, the podcast that changes the world will be mentioned in history books. Uh, there'll be a little segment on us. <laughs> there'll be a picture of us, but like they'll make they'll make it like sepia themed, so it looks like we're like war heroes or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Uh, so l- let's get right into it. Uh, I'm Brian, and today I'm the fan full of facts because we're at the the F in the alphabet, and I have a bunch of facts. Why are you still continuing with that? Because <laughs> I got nothing else. I got nothing else. God. That's what he's got. <laughs> Let him keep it. This isn't a sublime song. It's not what you got, all right? That's <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to think of you it almost like... Uh, uh, who's? Who, I, I know that Logic just had a, a song about him, uh, you know, like rapping along with the alphabet where, like, you know, he highlights yeah. each one. But didn't somebody else do that, too? Was it Del the Probably. Funky Homo sapien? Homo sapien didn't. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm just a a month, a couple month long, twenty six month. I know that'd be thirteen month. You know, a little over a year drawn out version of that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, Tom. Are you are you still the intolerable tech man? For now. <laughs> okay. okay. For now. We'll leave you with intolerable. And then Devante? Yeah. I still consider myself the retro guy. He's a tired boy today. <laughs> the, the tired retro guy. <laughs> and it's the three of us. We got a neat little uh, little, 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 little trio here. Uh, I, uh, I don't have any other words for three people other than a trio. So we're the... <laughs> <laughs> that is the where we are. of people. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into uh, the like little uh, intro thing, I have a fun story to tell you guys. It's stupid. It's really stupid. Uh, so I recently moved out, and I got I got an apartment, and uh, I'm still going home for dinner because I'm like you know I haven't cleaned my pots and pans yet. I still have to go grocery shopping. So I was home for dinner, and then I had to stop. Oh yeah, it, it was late, so I stopped at like a CVS to pick up cereal for myself for the next morning. And I bought like three boxes of Life because Life is a really good cereal. And I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Like I, you know, everything's a mess. The the the, fl- up, the 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 apartment, like everything is dirty still, and I gotta clean it. And the floor is sticky, and everything's in boxes. And like I'm just exhausted and tired. And I'm going, and I I, I got my Life in the seat next to me. You know, it, it's late at night. I'm listening to some music. I forget what I exactly was listening to. And I, I make a right turn. And my life starts to fall off the seat, my box of life, and I, I stop it. And the first thing that popped into my head uh, was Elton John's "Someone Saved My Life Tonight." And, oh my uh, god! I was like, I, I have a horrible <laughs> sense of humor. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, what? No, wait. I, that I'm is a bad back. joke. Why is your floor <laughs> sticky? Why I know. Floor I know it's sticky? <laughs> the floor is sticky. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like we had to do some drilling to put like the feet in the couch, uh, which was made out of a fence from a, from an alleyway. Uh, I'll explain, <laughs> I can explain that if you want later, but, uh, uh, we had to do some drillings. So, like there was wood filings on the floor. And then also, uh, you know, everybody had dirty shoes on as we we're like moving the shit in. And then also I, I, it might be because the, uh, the landlord cleaned it before I got in. And sometimes like when you over clean stuff, if it's like cleaned a lot, then like all like the chemicals just get stuck on the floor and it's sticky and you got to like wash it off with just water um and i use like this bona thing that's kind of like a wet swiffer and i use that to try to get it off and i think it just added more chemicals to it so it's just like a thin layer of just sticky chemicals um 
but it's no longer sticky. I used uh, some uh, Mr. Clean. Me and him got that. that I, I, I had to support the bald brand, you know. Well, I think uh, I'd like to ask Devante here to uh, help me give Brian a congratulatory uh, clap for uh, being welcomed into adult life. For doing adult things. Hooray. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. I, I am an adult now. Um, can, can you guys teach me to do my laundry? No. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I could, but just probably not here. This is not the time. <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> All right, we'll get to it later. Uh, so I feel like a fun intro topic today. We could do a real talk, R-E-E-L, you know, like a film reel. We could talk about our favorite uh, horror movies because we're still in Spooktober, the spooky season, uh, the scary times, uh, spooky, scary skeletons and all that shit. So uh, what, do you, what are you guys' favorite horror movies? What's, what's some recommendations we can give out to the people? And I would always recommend... Uh, classic... No, Sorry, I was saying, I would always recommend Halloween to anybody. That's my favorite, like uh, horror or I guess I should say, yeah, horror thrillers, slasher type movie of all time. Like just the series in general, you can watch one and two. They have a whole bunch of spinoffs after that that doesn't really matter. Then they had the remake recently, which kind of fixed all the um, movies after two that were complete garbage, but still entertaining at the same time. But the story it is. <laughs> Is it just me, or is that every <laughs> franchise from the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> they were like, how can we make this Like so Terminator. <laughs> uh, Back to the Future didn't, <laughs> they didn't reboot it, but I feel like, it, you know, the first two are well-respected. Uh, it, it, it did, uh, like, uh, Friday the 13th and, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, do they also have, like, it was good, and then they started to get to shit, and then they rebooted it. Like, I feel like we're at that point in history now. Yeah. Like, yeah bring it back, because it's a good idea, but now we're going to do it the right way. What's the best Halloween movie? Um, I like Halloween 2 the best. Like the second one after okay. the, the direct okay. sequel that literally happens like okay. five minutes after the first movie. Really? Five minutes after? Yeah. Literally in the first movie literally ends with Laurie going to the hospital and the second movie starts with Laurie in the, like arriving at the hospital. Continuity, I like. That. Yeah, that's nice. They well, they fin- they filmed Nobody both times. movies, I believe, on the same like um, time frame of filming in general before they released uh, the first one. They uh, Infinity War and Endgame did before. Yeah, the Russo brothers <laughs> yep. did that. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what are you gonna suggest? Uh, uh, it's a little bit of a re. Well, yeah, it is a reboot, but uh, it recently came out. The Invisible Man. Oh. That movie's fucked up. Yeah. I... <laughs> is that is that but, the one where like the lady's like afraid to go outside? No. So her, like her ex or whatever invents a machine in order to become invisible and literally stalks her, and he like fakes his own death. So everyone is just believing she's crazy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't like that. That's pretty creepy. Yeah, it's. it's and choice. I think. Yeah, but I think the one you're thinking of is um, what's that one? God damn it! It's not Cabin in the Woods, but it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I God damn it! It's like a chick with like brown hair. She's got an orange top, and this it's just a normal dude stalking her in this house that she's babysitting for. Ah, oh, fuck! What is it called? I can't. Remember. Should I? I'll try should I Google it. search that? <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up because I I kind of remember that. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tom, you just mentioned my favorite horror movie, uh, Cabin in the Woods. That's the one that kind of got me into them. I remember Devonta, you showed that to us. I want to say it was like your birthday, like what, like seven years ago or something like that. And up to that point, I had only seen Insidious, and I was like, I'm not, I don't like horror movies. And then you showed it to me, and you know, for the first part, you know, it's, where it's all kind of like not stereotypical but what you would expect from a normal horror movie you know the group of teenagers in the cabin and all that shit and then then the motorcycle scene happens with chris hemsworth and i'm like uh, okay and then they you know the whole twist happens and like i get it i get it now it makes sense <laughs> i i remember the title of the movie it's called it's when a stranger calls <laughs> Okay, there we it's go. Just a normal dude stalking her, and it's terrifying <laughs> because she's just in the fucking woods alone, and it could really happen. <laughs> I, I will say, now that I moved out and I live on my own, I don't know if I'm gonna have the same uh, tolerance for horror movies 
because now I live alone and by myself. So every sound in the night makes me like, am I going to die tonight? Is this it? Like, <laughs> yeah, somebody in here with well, me. Well, I think Bill, I think Bill Burr put it the best. Uh, once you move out, it's just you and the world, and there's just a door separating it from you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so funny. It, 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 we, we, we won't get into it. it. We already talked about it, but uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I feel like it changes your percept, your ability to handle scary things. But I don't know. I, I was preparing for this episode, and I watched some scary things on my own, and I'm doing okay. I'm not all not all messed up in the head yet, so maybe I can keep going. I mean. I have three blades in my bedroom because I'm that terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Two swords and then an actual like knife. <laughs> Are you gonna sword what? somebody right, up? Yeah, you... <laughs> Raphael from the Ninja Turtles. I will like... fuck someone up. Yeah, that's a Florida yeah. man story. Yeah, Florida <laughs> man like katanas someone's head off that broke into his house. <laughs> so what happened was I was gifted some replica swords from Lord of the Rings and they weren't sharp and then I made them sharp. <laughs> What do you mean? What do you have like a wet stone? Yeah, right. Like sharpening yeah. these. Yeah, I did that. Oh my god! You're like sitting like Ned Stark. I in have the a wet of a stone fort. for my kitchen knives. What? Tom is just a sitting in the middle man. of a forest like Ned Stark, just getting that blade nice and sharp for the next battle. Yeah, Florida man Tom decapitates Invader with katanas. <laughs> the Florida Tech Man. <laughs> 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 All right, I, I I think we 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 can wrap this discussion up then. So look up look up those movies if you haven't seen them, and if you have, you know, go and watch them again because they're they're good stuff. They're all right. Also, shout out to uh, Trick or Treat, the one that you uh, showed a couple weeks ago to find. That one was oh, yeah, pretty dude. good. It's I enjoyed so good. It. Uh, so it you know we just wanted to let you know we are on social media. Uh, at pause button pod. You know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, what's coming up for us? Uh, this is the last episode of Spooky Season. Um, so. The scary stuff has ended, but the fun will not. Uh, you know, a week from the when this episode comes out, on uh, November 5th, we're making a movie episode. That one's going to be uh, featuring uh, me, Devante, and Joey. we got some fun discussions uh, for that one. Uh, two weeks after that, on the 19th, we're changing our uh, regular schedule, and we're going to have a video game episode. Uh, if you know what's coming out on the 19th, you might have an idea as to what we might be talking about somewhat. It's related, but... Uh, That'll be then. And then on the 26th, we're going to have an episode coming out on Thanksgiving. It'll be amazing. So it'll make up for the fact that, you know, you're going to have to eat the, like, microwave dinner Thanksgiving by yourself as opposed to with your family and everything this year. Oh, uh, shit. It'll be a good episode. And, of course... Uh, <laughs> That was too real. I was, I'm not gonna... it, it's real. Let's address it. You know, like let, 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 it's 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 there. We're, we're we're here to make you forget about it. But we all know what's there. Uh, and then, of course, on Sundays. Um, in fact, uh, when this episode comes out, I think this Sunday coming up, uh, you can catch us at two o'clock. Me and Pat doing Resident Evil Two. Hopefully, we'll be wrapping that up to finish up Spooky Season. On uh, I think it'll be November first, day after Halloween. Uh, but for now, welcome to the Pause Button Podcast. Three times a month, your four favorite hosts, or right now three, Pat, Joey, Devante, and me, along with Tom, the intolerable Florida tech man, will take a topic, delve into its past, discuss its present, and debate its dazzling future, and we'll do our darndest to entertain you along the way. You can expect surprising facts, funny, funny jokes, deeply depressing monologues, and of course, unrelated witty banter. So whether you're watching a movie or playing a video game, sit down, shut up, and open your ears. It's time for you to relax and hit pause. So speaking of hellscapes, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of things that are scary and too real, uh, the Silent Hill. Yeah, dude. I wish they had like a cool thing like Resident Evil has when they're like Silent Hill or something like that, but they don't. <laughs> the, the, the Resident Evil thing is very iconic, and they should. <laughs>
<laughs> Although I did in my research, I did find out that the uh, well, was that I think it was Downpour where they had Corn do a song at the beginning. Oh And no. then the fans made like a. No. They did the. <laughs> there was a petition on Change dot org. You know the place people go to like you know like they have like serious petitions. They're like change the opening of this game. Corn doesn't belong here and like. The guy had to come out. He's like, we're not telling people to listen to corn. It's not like they're going to show up in a cut scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, if they just were, like, fucking in the background and you're exploring Silent Hill in the fog and you just faintly see corn while the music's playing. <laughs> it starts coming with that, like, uh, that, like, mouth rap part for, uh, <laughs> yeah. for kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> They're just playing up Pyramid Head as he's running down the street so right towards you. <laughs> <laughs> there's an up, there's, there's a level based on like the kid like doing the hopscotch off the cliff from uh, that the, that album. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, getting off topic. We're talking too much about corn and less about. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's talk about Silent Hill. Um, Coolest thing that I found, uh, you know, doing like general research for it, was that the town Silent Hill is based on two towns in real life, uh, Cushing, Maine, uh, which is definitely where they get their uh, Stephen King influences with like, you know, the mist and the family drama and all that shit. And then I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong, but Snoqualmie, Washington, uh, which is where they filmed Twin Peaks and like Stephen Lynch. So that's where they get that influence. But uh, they really like the kind of like cold... Uh, I think it's supposed Devante, it's supposed to be set like in like the like east coast somewhere, like Virginia or something, right? Yeah. That's for so sure. So it, it Yeah. They, they they want like that like old town America feel, you know, with Main Street but like with killers on it. <laughs> yeah, like port side <laughs> sea towns maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta have the creepy like lake or the yeah. Yeah. So let's let's get into it. The first game, 1999, uh, back when you know the golden age of like when spooky games, you know, started to come out with you know Resident Evil and all that stuff. You got Harry Mason looking for his daughter, and you know the cult and all that stuff. Yeah, dude. Like tank controls. <laughs> like bro, like the just the beginning of this game is so like crappy. Like I don't know, like. <laughs> Harry like Wait, fucking it loses. starts off he loses. Well. crappy like like not good no no as in like bad like he like like his wife dies and then he has his adopted daughter Cheryl and he's like oh let's go on this vacation right and then like his car breaks down and they fucking <laughs> end up in Silent Hill like what kind of fucking luck is that I'd be so pissed <laughs> <laughs> the world is out to get him for sure right oh and yeah then Cheryl definitely. somehow definitely. gets out of the fucking car when it breaks down and just disappears like. Bro, you you know like she could be like the call back to the hereditary episode. She could just be like that girl and just she had to go cut some heads off some birds or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, it did seem a little instantaneous how the daughter just disappears. It's just like oh she I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, man, I, 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 know, I guess it was like do, hard do crash, some weird I shit. Guess. He was he did get unconscious because he he crashed the car because he thought he saw like a girl in the street, but I guess I don't know. It's still like damn, you you're just trying to chill after you're being sad. What a way to start a game, right? Oh, and I, I guess Silent Hill does have a thing like kind of Resident Evil that's like a staple is the siren. I freaking totally forgot about that. Like there's a siren in the game. Does it have a siren? Is yeah, the like the siren blares. Like whenever like shit's about to go real, there's like. Uh- yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Every in every game, <laughs> yeah. That's now like when I was younger, I used to hate sirens because I played this. I'm like, oh shit! And they're like, if it's a fog <laughs> outside, I was like, well, I'm just dead, dude. Like, <laughs> look out your window, Scar- pyramid no, head but, standing there. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much pyramid head like scarred me. I f- I feel like if I ever saw something like that, I'd be like. I don't know what to make of the situation. <laughs> is he the best part about Silent Hill? Is he like the de facto, like, this is your mascot, this is the staple of the franchise, like, he is... I'd argue yeah, so. he is the, mon- like, the Silent fair. Hill monster. Yeah. That's fair. He's not even that much of a monster. He's just a dude carrying a sword with a fucking pyramid on it. <laughs> <laughs> a huge, huge sword. Like it's like cloud yeah. level, right? Like the like. Like the yeah, level, like, like, it reaches Sephiroth sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, I, but, yeah. I got some fun little tidbits about the the development of this game. Do you guys know much about it with like uh, Team Silent and all that? 
No, not too much. Okay, so here's some fun stuff. So obviously Konami is the you know publisher and everything, and they wanted to have a game that would sell well in the U.S. So uh, they wanted a development team to make this game like a Hollywood movie with like the big production and all that stuff. So they gathered this team that's now called Team Silent, uh, made up of employees whose previous projects had all failed. So they're like, let's take everybody who sucks, throw them at this, and they'll make something good, which turned out somehow. Uh, so they kind of felt like outsiders and they didn't really know how to work together uh i'm gonna pronounce it wrong but uh kichiro toyama uh wasn't even sure why they made him the director it was his first time directing a game and he's like why why am i in charge of this (laughs) (laughs) and like they almost all left konami uh before they were like you know what fuck them this isn't gonna be about this big production game we'll make it about like fear like an emotional game the psychological fear and we'll have like this like confusing plots like leave players in the dark and like you know the, the the fog and it's supposed to be all like uncovered as you go along and it's just it's a spooky ride and that's kind of what they started to get them going uh there was one guy uh takayoshi sato uh who was young and like uh, knew a lot but they didn't really respect him because he was young and all that uh so he started to like withhold his knowledge to get control and they almost put like a supervisor over him so that all his work would get credited to the supervisor uh, so he volunteered to do all of the cinematics and character designs by himself, and he lived in the office for two and a half years. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah. That's, that's dedication to your craft. My God. I know, man. I know. It's crazy. Like, good for you, but, like, that's insane. That's... It, it, man, fuck the 90s. <laughs> right? <God. laughs> they, they, they need a union or something. <laughs> they need it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, now, like, you know, this, 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 the franchise has gone on. Some of them have left. Uh, a couple of them left to Feel Good Games, which did, like, Yoshi's Woolly World and Kirby's Epic Yarn. <laughs> they were so traumatized. They like, got a little... You got to go the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have, like, Adam Sandler syndrome of, like, I want to make things my kids could enjoy. Like, right. <laughs> oh, God. And then, you know, some of them went to Kojima Productions, and then, you know, some of them went to uh, work on the medium, which we'll talk about later. Um but uh oh another fun story for the composer uh akira akira Yam, yamaoka yamaoka uh he wrote like the music for the game and he wanted it to be unique and when he first showed it to the development team they thought like the music was glitching and he had to explain why he made it that way and then they're like okay fine we'll use it <laughs> they're like is this this sounds really bad and he's like no that's that's what it should be and they're like oh okay like <laughs> <laughs> like cool but it works yeah. you know like it, it's a very distinct style of music for it yeah definitely oh man I'm just now remember like it's coming back to me in waves I'm now remembering a subplot in the first Silent Hill game where some dude was part of a drug trafficking like cartel and he found medicine to exercise demons and I was like Jesus dude, Christ there's a lot of <laughs> shit in all these games like <laughs> I, it gets dark yeah it, it does it's dark Oh my lord! I watched a cutscene. Uh, I think it was from Downpour, uh, where you're trying to open a door and you have to say this riddle, and then the boogeyman comes and just chokes a child to death in front of you. And I was like, "Oh, that's where these games go." Yep. Okay, I will uh, <laughs> set my expectations there. Is it is it the next next game, uh, or w- w- which game has somebody like giving birth to a god and then like they try to like kill it or something? Or they vomit up a, a god or something like that? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's two. Uh, oh, that's the third oh, one. Yeah, two. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's three, because that three has uh, fucking Heather in it. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that, but what do you guys think of Silent Hill 2? It came out in, like, 2001, and uh, it's something about, like, uh, James Sunder- Sunderland uh, gets a letter from his dead wife saying that she, uh, she's alive and in Silent Hill, which kind of sounds like the plot to Resident Evil 7, right? Like, Yeah, it is. It's exactly the plot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little, it's literally the same plot. <laughs> They're like, people don't know Silent it, Hill anymore. I, right? What is with Konami and being on board with just having the wives dead? Why? Well, it's gotta who be that, wants all these women? <laughs> it's got to be that, you know, that family drama, you know, and it, 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 they definitely focus in on a lot of death and, you know, like missing dead people because then you start to. But it's all. 
break the rules of it's always life. Always significant and... other. It's always it's always the wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, later on they get to like the brothers and you know all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I found it pretty cool what? that this game uh, was influenced by uh, the classic painter Rembrandt. They were like, we really want to put that uh, that art style from the like, hundreds of years ago in this game. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it looks good. That's that's yeah. definitely true. Also, the the you know they, they started to get dark, and they're like, we need to bring up sexual assault in this game. It's like, oh boy, okay, let me sit down. This is a lot. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jesus. But they made it light. They made it light. Oh, Did you Lord. know uh, Eddie uh, Dombrowski? D- Dombrowski. He was named after Eddie Murphy. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? <laughs> They were watching Shrek during that time, and they're like, shut up, donkey, you know? <laughs> right? They're like, who plays donkey again? Uh, oh, my Lord. No, it, is anyone, wait, is anyone in the game named after Michael Myers? <laughs> I don't know, Pyramid Head. Fuck, I don't remember anyone named Mike. Pyramid Head's real name? <laughs> uh, it's actually uh, Shrek uh, Sunderland. Shrek Sunderland is his name, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That'd be an awful name. But it, so this game has been, I, you know, I, was, I have to be honest. I haven't mentioned it at this point. I've never played a Silent Hill game. I just did a lot of research, and I'm going to depend upon these two because they they know their stuff better than me. Um, but uh, Resident Evil Two, Resident Evil Two, Silent Hill Two showed up on a lot of like best horror games ever kind of lists. Why is this one so high up there? Uh, go ahead. I I think it does the like the mist. Come, monster coming out of the fog really well like it, you you hardly know anything's coming up on onto your character um, until it's too late uh, I would say like the surprise factor is very good in this game and a shout out to them for using that mist of like hey like you know the PS1 can't handle these graphics that we want so just make everything foggy and then it's spooky and fits on the, the you know the system's like capabilities yeah, and also the atmosphere of actually being like in a realistic town, instead of like something akin to Resident Evil, where you have like, I don't know, uh, like trapped, uh, trapped statues and all this yeah. <laughs> in a mansion. <laughs> and they did improve upon like Resident Evil, like you know, the, there's some similarities for sure. But Resident Evil used those like uh, pre-rendered backgrounds that were basically just pictures that your character walked over, and these were actually like, like made environments in the game that like or graphics and you know yeah better interactivity Devonta, what do you think what makes it so good um i think this one is i think i like you said i think everybody who plays silent hill this is the staple of silent hill um i think it's because of the characters to be honest and like the interactions that um that james has with all of them like um when you first meet maria like james thinks that's his wife the whole time because they basically look the same and like she actually is pretty manipulative because she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to, like, one of us is going to have sexual, like, attraction to each other. And that's like, that's weird. Like, you just met me. Like, what the fuck is that about? Um, and basically, like, the whole time she's, like, trying to seduce James. But at the same time, he's, you know, he's like, bro, like, my wife, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you have a uh, freaking uh, Eddie who, like, kind of is, like, <laughs> yeah, he's having a piece of shit. But then, like, <laughs> he has a mental breakdown in the middle of the game because, like, he has he basically got bullied and, like, I don't know, verbal abuse, like, throughout his whole life. So, like, for him being fat, like, and then he has a mental breakdown. It's like, I think people can relate to, like, the stories and the characters in this more than the first one. Because uh, the first one, like you said, was, like, Colty. They had that one bitch who was like, yeah, we're going to resurrect at that incubus. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and this one is like, oh, these are actual like people that you can relate to. So I think that's why it's more of a um, staple. And there's like five million endings to this game compared to the first one. I was, I was gonna say, I think what makes this game so high up on the list is the fake ending where the dog is controlling <laughs> everything that happens. That's definitely why. The Shiba Inu that's just like behind the computer, like, yeah, it was me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that and the UFO Dude, endings and all that's great. There's one part of this game that really fucks me up, and it's where um, James, there's a video or whatever he watches, and it's it depicts him euthanizing his wife, and you're just like, oh my fucking yeah, god. 
they're not afraid to no. go hard and I, I, you got to commend yeah. them for it you know like oh my lord not every game needs to it, do that but it's nice to have games that go into that realm of like very adult very real kind of material yeah, and these games are not like forgiven either so like if you have to save a character between like one character and another one like you don't know that's happening they don't hint at anything like you said earlier they kind of leave you in the dark with everything so like if one of the characters goes missing and you just don't find them again they won't appear in the ending or you might find their dead body somewhere it's really crazy and i was like i think this is like one of the first games i played well especially when i was younger i was like this game sucks like it's so hard i can't figure <laughs> out what the hell i'm doing i keep going in circles like there are literally no hints throughout the whole place unless you're like you're reading every sheet of pipe like paper that you pick up or like paying attention to the walls or anything like if you don't know if you're not used to like hardcore puzzle games this one and i would not recommend i would just say watch a playthrough because you it definitely could be frustrating at sometimes yeah no i i think it's it, another great uh development thing that they weren't like yeah you are this super trained you know medal of honor he, like ready to go hero like you know how to sh- like you're just some dude who just shows up and like Maybe you find a gun, right. <laughs> but like you don't really know how to aim, or like I guess there's a hammer, oh, yeah. but like that's gonna break, and you're just like I don't know where I am. I'm just some dude. Like that's that's a good thing to come in on, like a, 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 like a counter, like different way to approach games. Up to that point, you know, you were the chosen one, you were, you know, like the person who had all these abilities, and now it's like no, you're you're you, you're some dude. I I, I can't remember if this is. In this game, are you allowed to hide? Is that what is that a mechanic in this one, or are you just running in this one? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think the hide mechanic. I think that came in three with Heather. Okay. Yeah, two thousand three. So, let's let's get into three. So three came out in two thousand three, and uh, this is <laughs> the first one to feature the other world, right? Where you're like full on flipping between realities. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think so. That actually, I didn't know this. It actually influenced uh, the Duffer Bros uh, for the Upside Down and Stranger Things. Oh, that that would make sense. Yeah, because that definitely exactly what it is. It, <laughs> it definitely looks like that. Yeah. Like, and then game development wise, the stuff that I was finding out, like when you turn on hard mode, uh, well, I, the fact that there's a hard mode for the combat and then it's separate <laughs> hard mode for puzzles. Great idea. It That's is awesome. That is really but cool. like the hard, the hard. The hard mode for puzzles, they were just like, yeah, you need to have like knowledge of Shakespeare. I was like, Jesus, that's good for them for really going in on that. Like, right? But it's like, I don't want I, it. Yeah, I I would love to see what that would be like because I only ever played it on normal. <laughs> There's no fucking way I could solve that. <laughs> Another thing, uh, uh, the character Vincent was based on Ethan Hawke, uh, as well as the look of derangement and moodiness. So. I don't know why they don't like Ethan Hawke, but they're like, <laughs> take that guy, make him look real bad. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was a piece of shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, e- Ethan Hawke. Ethan, wow, Ethan. Ethan Hawke looks like a moody kind of dude. Yeah, so. no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, and I know, I was going to say, this one is actually a direct sequel. They, this is the first sequel of Silent Hill. Yeah, where it comes back, yeah. it's like surprise! Yeah. It's the it's the baby yeah. from one. She's here now. <laughs> it's like the baby that the incubator gave to Harry. Is like what? Let's see. How does she get to the town again? What makes her go there? Uh, she or she just born no, there? No, she was. She I think there. she was going like she was doing some shopping shit, and then she went to go get food and fell asleep. And I think she had like a nightmare about Silent Hill, and that's when you she realized she can like jump back and forth. Like uh, like the uh, like the other world or something like that, um. Yeah, because I think it was it was at some amusement park. I think. Okay. Did, okay. Did it have something to do uh, where the person vomits up the evil god fetus <laughs> that Claudia eats and then dies giving birth to, or no? Yeah. <laughs> I probably probably. <laughs> We're not lying when we say it's dark, man. This stuff is it's heavy. It's out there, but like. It's definitely no one else had done this kind of stuff yet, so it's cool that they were making it. You know, yeah, they they really leaned into the like cult stuff. I feel like towards this one a little bit when it, when the deity becomes more of an issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had like this since it is a sequel, the cult just gets even worse. And they're like, 
You thought you were a normal kid? No, we implanted God inside of you. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind about being an everyman. You are definitely the chosen yeah. one now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. So, moving on from that one. Uh, are you guys good to move on from three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So, four, uh, The Room, came out in 2004. I love when stuff does that. Of like Three came out in 2003. Four came out in 2004. Like, it's very... That's very neat. Uh, you know, it changed things up, and suddenly you just have the room uh, with Henry. He's an introvert in his late 20s, uh, which he lives on his own in an apartment, and it makes me really afraid to play this game now that I just moved out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you got Walter. Uh, the, the Walter Sullivan, which sounds very neutral. It just sounds like a boring, like, that's the guy who does my taxes name. But he's not. He's a, a supernatural killer. Uh, who wants to raise his mother from the dead. So it's a cool plot point to have. Yeah, like this this game, I think, um, I would say this one is, I guess, the more, I guess I would say the most relatable other than two, like as in like, like real life type stuff. Because uh, like you said, it's just an apartment complex. This guy is living here and then he realized he can't leave. <laughs> like, he can't open his front door. He can't open any window. And then he's just like, what the fuck? And, like, he can hear people from outside trying to check on him or knocking on the door. And, like, they did a really good job because, like, the peephole that are in front of most apartment buildings, you can look through that. And if you stay there long enough, mm-hmm. you can see, like, random people walking by or have people having normal conversations. And, like, there's times, like, when he kind of has a break and he starts screaming and, like, nobody can hear him. Or, like, his friends will come by knock on the door and he's like, I'm here. And, like, you can see their worry and he's, like, losing it. It's really cool. It, good for them for, you know, another, like, kind of counter thing of, like, everyone feels safe in their room, right? Well, that's where everything bad happens now. So you can't have that anymore. Your room's bad, too. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you just fucked everywhere. You thought Silent Hill was only in the city? <laughs> uh, cool thing that I found, uh, that the, the killer dude, Walter Sullivan, is technically from the third one. He was referenced in an article that you can find that says he killed himself in jail after he killed his two kids. Yeah, dude, fuck Walter, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking serial <laughs> killer. Oh like, come on, dude. He's a piece of shit throughout like the whole game. But I just want to resurrect my mother. Dude, uh, mm-hmm. I think this one, uh, like, it's a good game, but it kind of goes over the top compared to the rest of them. Like, um, when you leave your apartment, there's like the hole in the bathroom. There's just an escalator for some reason just in there. Like <laughs> that's how you get. It's like warm. Yeah, holes, that's man. how you get to the, like the Silent Hill part of the game, and like or the other worlds as they call them. But like, why is there an escalator? Why can't it just be something cooler? You know, <laughs> doesn't. <an> es- <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> then you run into the dogs the first time down there, and you don't have any weapons. It's pretty cool, but it does get over mm-hmm. the top. And that's. Fair. I mean, that's as things tend to go. You know, you start to escalate, and you got to make it different, and. Sometimes that uh, backfires for sure. But it's fair to say that, like, the numbered ones are the classics that everybody remembers fondly, right? right? yeah. Those are definitely the staples. Yeah, I, yeah I'd say so. The golden years. The, the, the... This one was definitely a standalone, just seeing if they could branch out from being, like, in Silent Hill. And I don't think it worked, because... <laughs> but... I mean, it definitely changed things from there. Uh, so, yeah. you know, after this, they kind of got into... Different things, like they made a rail shooter arcade game in 2007 that I'm sure everybody loves because that makes sense to make a horror <laughs> game a rail shooter, but okay. Uh, they had some mobile games in you know the late 2000s, and uh, there was a PSP game uh, that was kind of like a, uh, Origins there, and then uh, Homecoming came out in 2008. Anything about Homecoming you guys want to say? I think that uh, Homecoming was an attempt to revitalize the series. But people just remembered, like, the fucking PSP game and, um, like, the room, like, it was, it was well light, but when you compare them to the first three, it's kind of like, like Tom said, it's like off the wall, like, what is this? Then you come out with Origins and they're like, well, that was a garbage game. So, like, hey, we're bringing back Homecoming, (laughs) like, we'll still do, like, you know, uh, just, like, a hospital that just fucking fucked up and you still go to Silent Hill and stuff. Like, we're back. And then people are just like, no, we're not going to trust you. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost like uh, <laughs> like the the Spider-Man story of, like, 
they had the golden years and things kind of got bad near the end and then they tried to do something else with amazing spider-man it didn't work and then they had homecoming but uh spider-man homecoming went well and this 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 did not <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and the gameplay was fine it was a, it was a decent game i didn't really care about what I, alex i think the guy's name was um like i d- oh you didn't care about him no oh <laughs> like, his story is like okay um but yeah, I didn't like some of the monsters weren't as cool. Um, but I do, I do like the character interactions though, because like they do have like a lot of trust issues. Because you meet that chick Margaret, I think, in the game, who's supposed to be like your friend, and then she ends up torturing you in a chair. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, don't know, I think it belongs in the franchise. Like that makes yeah. sense. I, th- I think she thought she yes. was helping you. I would say <laughs> that they did a really good job in this game is updating a lot of the monsters, like the nurses. Um, the, the lurkers are oh, yeah. fucked up. Cause you're just like, what the fuck is this like body on the ground? And then he just swipes at you with this like nine inch long fingernails. And it's, Ooh. it's really cool. Yeah. No, I, I kind of reminded me of liquors from Resident yeah. Evil. A little yeah. A little bit. Maybe not the fucked up face. Yeah. Like liquors if they didn't have did, full legs. I did notice that a lot of people talk about, you know, the monsters of the franchises that go throughout it. And a big thing is if they mess up the monster design, people really don't like that. So good to hear that this one had good stuff yeah uh then we had shattered memories in 2009 oh which was kind of like the first one but like played out a little differently and uh Devante, i think is it fair to say that the first one's better yeah yeah like they okay. they like they tried to like i mean i thought it was cool because it came out on the wii so i was like oh that's really cool and then it came out on ps2 but for it to come out like a nintendo to actually say yes to this type of game I was actually surprised because I think this was when Nintendo was like, yeah, you know, we actually have a kind of fucked up game in our system. Well, they had Radium games before, but I think this one is a whole different Mad character. world. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, this actually came out on the Wii and that's what I played it on, which probably was a mistake. Um, just because I don't think the controls went over very well. Um, just because, you know, the Wii mode was okay at best for most games. But this one is like, you have to like you write like you you they were they did a lot about using the Wii Mote for you like f- pointing the flashlight of course or using like the torches to see stuff and sometimes it was just really buggy and didn't work half the time so you're just like running away from stuff like you can't aim where you're going and shit like that so um it was, you got to be developed for the Wii right. you can't be put on right the Wii. yeah that's it was a PlayStation game that they were like you know what the analogs just make it the Wii Mote. <laughs> mm, I don't know if that works. It's, it's fine. Just throw it on there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then 2000. Oh, yeah, sorry. Are we all good to move on? Yeah. I mean, I have much to say about that one. It was just okay. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, then. That's just. That's a reboot. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, Downpour came out in 2012. Uh, it was developed by Vatrig Games, which is in the Czech Republic. So I found a pretty cool Game Informer article that was talking about uh, it was influenced by like the atmosphere of the town they're in. Uh, it's Soviet history, like how, like when they were growing up, uh, when they were like seven, like school taught them how to throw grenades to defend their factories from the invading West and all that shit. So like, it's dark and there's crypts there and there's even a gorge near their offices called Stepmother's Abyss about a fairy tale uh, about a woman who threw an unwanted child into the pit. Damn. So it they had some dark influences. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the guy was talking about like going to the crypts and like finding remains like and like they're well preserved so like you could see like this woman's expression and her limbs contorted in uh desperate terror is what he said mummies lining the walls and like just piles of bones of monks who couldn't be put back together again like it's a good influence for a horror game that That works (laughs) yeah no that'd be a terrifying room to be in (laughs) (laughs) and then of course you got corn doing the song we (laughs) talked about and uh Mixed reviews of this, like, eh, it's okay, but uh, the Game Informer said, I, I don't regret my time with Silent Hill Downpour, but mediocrity hung over most of my playthrough. Oof. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically sounds exactly what um, I would say. Because they brought back, like, the, like, the decision-making system, like you have in some games, when it's like, you have to decide in certain cutscenes, like, are we going to make this choice or this choice? But half of the time, it didn't really make a difference. Um, 
and like the monsters and I felt like in this game were just like lazy. You know? I feel like you can walk by some, They did not chase yeah, that much. It's, it's like yeah. you get to a threshold and they're just like, I'm done. But like in the early ones, like they're chasing you until you go inside a building. Like I don't know. I will say boss wise though. Boss wise, I like the boogeyman with his sledgehammer and the uh what they call him. <laughs> uh wheel man. <laughs> The dude whose life support you yeah. unplug, and he's like magically throwing chairs at you. I, wa- I watched that, and I was like, "This is pretty messed up." And it fit the story well over the story about like you know the the Europe convict, and you did you kill that guy, right. and like it, it, An- Anne's father, and all that. Yeah, they um, they really like just cutting people's life support in these games too. <laughs> they're just like, you know what, it's hospital beds, they're not gonna save nope. people anymore. You're you're you safe. safe nowhere. <laughs> And uh, then, of course, there's Book of Memories on Vita, but we don't need to talk about it because no, no one yeah, bought who, Vita Yeah, who games. bought a Vita? Nobody. Uh, th- by the way, this game was the fourth best-selling My Vita brother. game, uh, which means that about 10 people bought it. So good for them. <laughs> good for them. <laughs> All right. So uh, our segment in between uh, the past, present, future today is a little bit of a promo. Uh, so if you're looking for another podcast that discusses nerdy topics, uh, the Nerd Byword podcast is a great one to check out. Uh, they do like news updates and deep dive discussions, and they have a true respect for uh, geek culture. So uh, if you're looking for something like that, uh, they're on most podcast forums. So go search uh, the Nerd Byword and uh, give Chris and Dave a listen. They got a pretty good show there. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll give him a listen uh, probably sometime this week. Yes, um, but listen to us first. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So speaking of things first, uh, the present, things going on uh, recently somewhat. Uh, We can talk a little bit about, uh, you know, PT, the playable teaser and Silent Hills and all that. So the biggest, coolest thing that I thought of uh, when I was researching it is, you know, they, they framed this thing as not being Silent Hills or Kojima before you played it, right? It was just like, wait, what is this? It just got shadow dropped on the PlayStation Store, and the studio was 7780s Studio, uh, which 7,780 is the square kilometer of an area in Japan that translate to quiet hills. <laughs> so, like, people in Japan even sometimes call, like, the Silent Hill franchise Shizuka because that's the name of that area. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, he oh. was influenced by horror movies that he would find flipping through the channels after midnight, you know, just late at night going through, and then he wouldn't know the actors or directors, so it's this big surprise of, like, what is this, what's going on? So he wanted that to be, like, a, what, what is this thing, I don't know, and then, like, they even purposely lowered the graphics from what they could do to make it look rougher, like, it wasn't this big AAA thing with, like, you know, one of the best video game designers out there making it, and he wanted it to break the predictable patterns of, like, what games do, that's good because it, it fucking worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say, though, uh, he, he's quoted saying, I don't really play horror games because I get scared. And uh, he's saying, <laughs> he saying that he tried uh, Resident Evil or Biohazard, as is known in Japan, and he quit halfway through because he got scared. <laughs> but he yeah, made but he this, made like, one of which, the scariest like, like, game demos of all time. Yeah, no, not even game demos. Like, uh, what, what uh, there was... Some. It's like 27 hidden things in this thing, too. It's yeah. fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Game, Games Radar uh, ranked it the fourth best horror game of all time, and it's not even a game. It's a teaser. Right. It's this short little <laughs> thing you play. But, you know, oh my Lord. crying fetuses and fathers killing their entire families and repeated whispers of 2048-63 over and over will do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like... And, of course, you know, it's... Yeah. If you're just hearing about this somehow or, like, you know, you were like, oh, I kind of want to play that. Uh, you can't. Konami took it down after Silent Hills got canceled, and there's been attempts to remake it, and uh, Konami does not like that. I will say, though, uh, that there's this guy named Kimsar who remade it in 2018, and Konami was like, nah, but here's an internship because you did a good job. <laughs> so they, they try to, you know, make it better. Just yeah. let it go. It's like, let the masterpiece yeah, why don't they be just made. Let it happen, like because they're definitely not going to go out and do it. Well, funny you mentioned that. Uh, so let well no. f- before we get to the future. No. <laughs> one quick thing: some people thought that this was about his relationship with Konami. That was his influence behind the game. Apparently, Metal Gear Solid is about his relationship with his dad, who died when he was younger. So they're like, maybe this is about him trying to escape Konami. 
Uh, I'll, I'll put the YouTube video in the description. It, it's pretty interesting. I don't, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Probably not, but it's cool speculation. Um, but if you're missing Silent Hills, you know one came out last year, 2019? What? Uh, what? It it was a pachinko machine they put in like Dave and Buster's and. Uh... What the? F- <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? what? Yeah, man. What are you talking about? You know when like you yeah. go to arcades and like they give you the tickets and you put to- tokens. There's a Silent Hill game. That's garbage. Came out last year. That's what they've been doing God. with the license, man. <laughs> oh God. It's okay. So let, let's get into the future. What's coming in the future? There are rumors. Hopefully, fo- hopefully Hideo Kojima buying Konami and then fucking <laughs> kidding. So there are rumors that they're going to make two that are in, de- in development already. Uh, it, it, Aesthetic Gamer is a guy online who's a reputable leaker. We talked about him on the Resident Evil episode. Uh, and he's saying that there's two. One of them is a soft reboot because you got to do that. And then the second one is kind of like an Until Dawn Telltale game style game. And they're supposedly all rumors. Uh, Sony Sony Inter- uh, Sony Entertainment Interactive Japan Studio might be helping Konami make the game with some original Team Silent members. Uh, it's from an Escapist article. I'll put that in the description below. It came out in March, uh, in- including uh, Ke- Keichiro Toyama, who is the Silent Hills one director and writer, uh, Akira Yamaoka, who is the composer, and Masahiro Ito, who was the creature designer. Uh, supposedly, it's been in development for one and a half years already. And uh, Sony might be the whole reason behind the push. They, I think they want uh, an exclusive of like, hey, we brought Sound Hills back, but you can only play it on PS5. They supposedly want VR support, and they might even be wanting to repair the bridge between Konami and Kojima, which, no, th- that's not going to happen. There's no, no he's way Kojima's definitely going, not back, going back, right? <laughs> After they fucking stole Metal <laughs> Gear, bro. Like... <laughs> Yeah, and then ruined. What was it? The shitty Metal Gear game that came out. Uh, Metal Gear Survive, which is what I was about to bring up. <laughs> it's most of that game is just putting up fences and then stabbing zombies beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> it's zombies. For some reason, Metal Gear Solid suddenly has fucking zombies. <laughs> Why not, man? Why not? But the, oh, shout God. out to Sony for trying to make this happen. If it I, it sounds reputable to me, but you know, you never know with rumors, but. It could be coming. We might be getting sound. I, if it's been in development for, excuse me, almost like two years now, uh, you know, we can probably expect, if it's real, like a trailer or something. Yeah, soon, maybe right? video game awards when, you know, towards, uh, like, you know, the end of the holiday season when they can try to get boost their sales for the upcoming, you know, uh, fiscal year for sales for PS5. I can see them dropping at least a, a teaser like just show Silent Hill. Like they don't even have to do like a full like gameplay trailer. They they, they it's so reputable that they can literally say, uh, it could just show up for like a ten second clip and just have Silent Hill in the background, some spooky music, and everybody go crazy. A Metroid Prime Four yeah. logo thing, but but they don't cancel the game a month after that. Right. Comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I just hope it's not a remake. I I hope it's to God not a remake of the like, I, first two. Yeah, do do the uh requel that people have been calling it like a remake sequel of like like not not in the same vein of Force Awakens, but more of just like hey, we're coming back. It's the roots, but it is the new thing, like kind of like Ghostbusters Afterlife of like you're going to have some memories, but also it's it is it is brand new. I feel like that'd be a good route to go. Yeah, like I think it's going to be like how they did with Resident Evil. Um when they rebooted to well one, two, and three at this point, um, I think they should do Silent Hill two and just make it like HD and like kind of change up the story a little bit because they want to. You still want to be able to introduce it to new people, and like you want to yeah. be able to go back to the roots. And they, that, I think that's the best story to do it with. I would be okay if they just re-released that like HD, not the exact same gameplay, of course, but um, add in some new things. And then the game after that is when they branch off to like you know silent hill five and screw out the other ones after that (laughs) absolutely now that is all speculation it's all rumors but if you're looking for something that is real that's definitely coming uh on december 10th uh xbox only series x and s and pc are going to have the medium uh by bloober team in poland who previously did layers of fear the observer and blair witch 
and it is all, all creepy games. Oh yeah, oh yeah. By the way, all creepy games. And it's very influenced by Silent Hill. It's third person. There's gonna be fixed camera angles, like the old days of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Uh, they wanted it so that you can have the best view of things, almost like a movie camera getting the best shot. Uh, it's a psychological horror. You travel into a dark realm, and there's going to be puzzle solving. Uh, Akira Yamaoka is going to be there. Uh, they originally showed him footage of gameplay footage of it, and uh, to see if he was interested. And he finished, you know, watching it, and he's like, "You guys mentioned that you're making two games. I want to make both of them." So <laughs> apparently, it looks good. Uh, also, they're going to have Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Uh, who sang for a lot of the Silent Hill games, like all the songs that play before you start, other than the corn one. Uh, <laughs> or she might have worked with the corn, I forget. Um, but anyway, she'll be doing some of the singing for this. Um, and then, I, I don't know, Devon, do you want to talk about like the story a little bit, like what's going on here? Um, so, I mean, I've only really watched the trailer. I didn't really do too much in depth of it, but, I mean, it basically reminds me of Silent Hill 3 almost, kind of like where they jump in between worlds. Um which I think that's probably where they got the influence from. Um, but I mean, other than that, I mean, the trailer itself, like I said, really reminds me of Silent Hill 3. And, like, the only issue I have with the company is since they did make Blair Witch and that game was garbage. Um, <laughs> I hope that is not going to be a bad game. But they did make Layers of Fear, and the first Layers of Fear is a really good, like, scary game. But if they can implement that to, like, a, like a third-person type, adventure game i think it should be a pretty good game yeah i can see that uh also they're gonna have some pretty good voice talent behind it uh the evil guy known as the maw is gonna be voiced by troy baker so that's oh, cool they say got they got a little bit of a budget <laughs> they yeah, oh, yeah. dude they, they've had a budget for quite a while i don't know if you remember but uh this game was originally announced not for xbox one and ps4 but for 360 ps3 and i think we oh my god or maybe, it must have been we at that point uh, but they delayed it for better technology, completely skipping this generation and waiting until we can get, you know, all the fancy new 4K, like, you know, solid state drive stuff coming on the new generation. So that's why you can't play it on the current gen. You have to get the new systems to play it. And I think that's mainly due to the other world or whatever they're going to call it in this one. But it's going to be like, you remember how like in the, uh, if you play Dishonored 2, you can hop back and forth between time and that mansion. Right. This isn't hopping back and forth. It's simultaneously on the screen. It's split screen, and one side's the real world, the other side's the spirit world, and you see yourself in both, and you have to interact with both worlds at the same time as they load. Yeah, no wonder they waited to this. <laughs> because that seems like that's... Yeah, they need yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I, uh, I hope it works also, out. It looks cool, yeah. though. And, it, and I'm, I'm planning to pick it up. It's going to be spooky. Oh, yeah. And uh, But should be a game that should be streamed honestly because that's gonna be a very good game to be streamed <laughs> oh yeah for sure i got uh two two interesting points here uh so there's two composers for the game i already mentioned yamaoka from the silent hill franchise he's writing the music for the spiritual world and then somebody from poland uh arcadia's uh Rikowski, I think is how you pronounce it. He's writing the music for the real world, and he was influenced to use the synthesizer uh, by shows like Chernobyl and Stranger Things, which I love when things happen like that. Like, Silent Hills influenced Stranger Things, and now Stranger Things is now influencing the video game world. It's, like, all cyclical like that. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Like, full circle. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing is there's a GameSpot interview, and they were talking about how uh, the whole thing, you know, like we talked about how like the stories of these games matter and the characters and everything, and the whole driving point behind the medium is that it's all about points of view. Uh, he said, so nothing is simple, nothing is black and white, and everything depends upon or on the perspective and the information we have. Playing as a medium will give us a very unique vantage point that's beyond the reach for ordinary people. So it's going to be kind of like that, like, well, from my perspective, this is bad. But from this perspective, it's actually good and, like, the morally gray kind of thing. And I think it's a good uh, good way to go. Yeah, I hope it does well. So that can influence Sony to probably be like, you know what? Let's go through with it. Some, something similar to this is probably, and this is a weird comparison, but Halo 1 and 2 the anniversary editions where you can flip between the old uh, graphics and the new graphics. That's a good point. Yeah. It's, they're both rendered at the same time. So it's not like a like load of like, okay, you're switching now. It's just like, boop. There's no load. You literally just press a button and it's... Nice. I like that. Yeah. 
good good on Microsoft. And also good on Microsoft because this is an exclusive for them. Yeah. You know, they got the... So, um, oh, last thing, I got, I got to mention this. Uh, there's a Polish artist named uh, Be- Beksinski, uh, and they they were influenced by his artwork. And, uh, you know, that's going to be good because a bunch of black metal bands from Europe uses artwork for their albums. So it's going to be some spooky looking oh, stuff. Nice. Yeah. So um, going back to the PlayStation and Microsoft thing, in terms of big questions, Xbox is going to have the medium, right? And then PlayStation supposedly rumored to have Silent Hill as, a, as, a, as an exclusive so what do you think is going to be the better, quote-unquote, Silent Hills experience based upon what we have already? Is it going to be the soft reboot of some people from Silent Hills coming back? Or is it going to be kind of people who are influenced by that and are trying to put it into a new perspective, a new game with their own twist on it coming from the medium? I guess it all depends on how well the medium does between the switching between uh, worlds. So if it's just like a pain in the butt, then yeah, I think definitely Silent Hill is going to take over because um, I can see how that can be kind of a, I don't know, a pain in the ass to deal with almost. Like, it's a cool idea, but if you have to, like, or if it's, like, simultaneously when you have to use it so often, I can see how that can be kind of annoying for some people that, that play gameplay that way. Um, but, yeah, if Silent Hill reboots, I think that Microsoft might have a little bit of issues unless, like, they, you know, they reboot and go back to, like, Shadow Memories type thing, so... Mm-hmm. No, it, it, it's it's funny that you know Microsoft was like, hey, that it's an open real estate franchise. You know, like the, there hasn't been a Silent Hills game in a while. You know, the Konami canceled Silent Hills with Kojima, so let's fill that gap. So they started working on the medium, or I guess that was before because they started started to make it for those early generations. But you know, it was it was pretty open at that point. And then at the same time, it's like, well, uh, Silent Hills is back too. So like, if it does come, so it, it's kind of like a. Uh, when like there's like a cover band out there and then the original band goes on a reunion tour and it's just like <laughs> what's the more real perceptive you right. know like it, it's a it's a or you could just I wonder in- if a move I wonder if a movie would revitalize the series too they're working on bit. one they're working on a, a new Silent Hills movie oh I didn't know yeah. that god damn it. It's <laughs> so th- wait is it made by the dude who <laughs> hopefully better than the one they put out uh yeah, so the, the one of yeah. uh, three so it, it, there's two movies out right like what a silent yes. Hill? yeah i only know of the one i don't know about another one <laughs> uh there's the first one and then revelation yeah which came out in i think i know about 2012 revelation. are they both bad oh. yeah i mean yeah. they like well, some of the I, monsters I show the like they, they they show look kind of cool sometimes but other than that yeah they're pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> cg was not on point yeah uh, so apparently, uh, th- it's this came out in February of this year, but uh, the director Christoph Gans uh, is making that along with uh, another video game movie based on a Japanese series called Fatal Frame Project Zero. So uh-uh. it's coming. Cool. And Gans did do uh, the first one, and did he do uh, Revelation too? Uh, nope, he just did the first one. Oh, okay. So the guy who did the first Resident Evil film is in development of a new one. Granted, the movie world is on fire, so that could get developed and shel- or canceled and shelved any day. Right. But as of right now, it's in development. Cool. Any uh, wrap-up thoughts on Silent Hill? Uh, the guy who makes the Resident Evil movies needs to be <laughs> fired. He needs, they need to really cut him out. I don't know, stick... Stick Guillermo del Toro on that. He'll probably make they a better good not one. put freaking Mila Djokovic or whatever in the Silent Hill movie. I'm gonna be pissed if she's in it. <laughs> she. I don't even know. What I don't know. They'll find play. something for her. I don't her. think she's anyone's like around. The, she's like a bad <laughs> omen, dude. If she's starring in a video game movie, it's just gonna be garbage. So you <laughs> you don't want to watch Monster Hunter? Dude, Sunday? there should not be guns in Monster Hunter. <laughs> Like actual military guns. They, they shouldn't be American soldiers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teleported into. Should just be people in the fucking. They should have made Hunter that one. guy from it's the village trash, just it's the main character, but like, no, we have to get Mila K- Djokovic so she can ruin the movie. It's because the director just loves his wife. God too damn. Much. Anyway, other than that, <laughs> wait, is it? 
people should play this game or at least watch playthroughs. I, I, I think. Yeah. 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 It, it, this is. So I, I think you could say like the gold standard of, of scary games. Right? Yeah. Like I know Resident Evil, but when you add zombies, it's kind of a different genre. Like this is full on. Like this is a horror video game. This is what they go for. This is the big influence that's right. out there. Yep. All right. So we'll we'll put a wrap on spooky stuff for now, but we could always come back to it. You never know. Ooh. Uh, so, Ooh. <laughs> uh, so let us know what you thought of our, our episode, and uh, you know you can tweet at us, you can DM us on Instagram, slide in those DMs if you want. Uh, let us know if you got any topic ideas. We're always gonna be happy to see those. And if you're listening on a service that you don't normally like, you can find us on other ones. When you know YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're all over the place. Uh, so just search pause button podcast or pause button pod for our social media. Uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, posting on November 5th, 19th and 26th with all those fun episodes. Uh, if one of our episodes gets 60 listens, we're going to have a fun prize for you. We're only eight subscriptions away on YouTube. All you got to do is click boop subscribe and we will be closer to a video episode. You'll get to see our faces as we talk on zoom. Um, but if you enjoyed it, share it with somebody. If you didn't let us know why you didn't, but overall we, Thank you so much for your listening ship, if that's a word. We truly do appreciate it. Um, But for now, uh, until the next episode, Tom, what's going to be our next topic? Our next topic is going to be discussing more international spooky films because they need to be respected just as equally as uh, American ones, such as Train to Busan. (laughs) You know what? That's fair. I can get behind that. That was the guy who did Parasite, right? I don't know. Oh. Maybe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to Parasite too, because that's that's a, that's a that's a fun international spooky film. <laughs> True. Um. So go play Silent Hills. Go watch some spooky movies. But for now. Now we're gonna hit pause.